<sighs> There's really only one life hack or system that I use to make sure that I can get all of the things done. And that one life hack is batching. I batch everything. So today I'm actually in the process of batching. I'm batching these videos and I thought, well, this is a great time for me to show you a little bit of my process and how I use batching in my business as well as my day-to-day -day life. I literally use batching for everything. So let's talk about the how of it. How frequently, you know, like how do you go about batching this? Are you doing it every Sunday or whatnot? And the truth is I do a little bit of everything. I do annual batching. I do weekly batching. I do quarterly batching. It really just depends on the task. So I'm going to share how often and how I manage the batching of different types of projects in this video. But just know like you can really tweak it however you want. There are people who do entirely different batching setups and scheduling setups than me. There are people who do like every day of the week based on a specific theme or subject matter so that they're doing all their creative tasks on Monday and all of their social tasks on Tuesday and so on. I might dip into that just a little bit. Like you'll notice I try to do my meetings and social tasks at the end of the week. But for the most part, I'm not set on any specific days for my batching. I'm more set on weekly goals. Why is it so helpful? Well, there has been so much research and so many studies done on context switching, which is essentially switching from one task to another. A lot of people consider this multitasking, right? So you're trying to do a whole bunch of different things at once, but really multitasking doesn't exist because our brains aren't really able to focus on multiple things at the same time, right? So instead, what it's doing is switching from one thing to another back and forth as quickly as it can but even that isn't as quickly and seamlessly as just focusing on one thing and getting in flow for a long period of time. One study by Princeton University showed that you lose an exponentially increasing amount of time for each additional task that you put on your plate. For example, if you, instead of focusing on one task, which gives you 100% of your time, focus on two tasks, well, their study showed that you lose 20% of time just in the process of context switching. And by the time they got to five or more tasks that they were focusing on, they had lost a whopping 75% of their efficient and effective time that they had available to do those things. So you can see how it just makes sense to try to group together those things that you're doing that have you in a certain state of flow or are a certain type of category or task or project. And that's really where batching comes in. So that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. I won't lay it all out for you right now, but I'm gonna show you some ways that I use batching on a regular basis in order to exponentially just save tons of time. I can't tell you how stressed out I get when I get behind in batching and I'm like trying to play catch up each time with each new project and task I do. It's stressful. The first thing I batch is my planning. And I've talked about this in my video on the 15 systems that have simplified my life, how batching everything was one of them and how I even batch my planning. I had a lot of questions about that. So when I say I batch my planning, I mean all of my goals, all of my projects, my tasks, asks how I intend to spend my day to day and my week. And it's all based on reverse engineering my goals. So I have core goals that I'm working on for my business. Usually we have a financial goal and then we have a growth goal. And then for my personal life, I have things like self-care goals, maybe fitness goals, vacation goals, family goals, so things like that. And I'll take this holistic look at what I want to be doing on a regular basis, daily, weekly, monthly, etc., on my calendar and then I start reverse engineering all of that stuff. I do this in batches so that every day I'm not having to sit down and pull out my planner and decide, okay, well, what do I need to be doing today? Or every week I don't have to reinvent the wheel because I've already sat down and batched all of these things. And there are several tools that I use to get this done and to track everything and make sure that everything is fitting together and Tetrising the right way. For my team and my work related tasks, I use ClickUp. In the past, I have used Asana, I've used Trello, before. ClickUp is really awesome and I'm really enjoying it because you can get super nitty gritty with subtasks and due dates for those subtasks and it just makes beeping things out really easy. And then for my personal life, I use Google Calendar, which I've talked about many times so that I always know what's going on and I'm always prepared and I don't forget any of my appointment dates. And then because I get inspired and visual with my goals sometimes, I get more motivated when I can get a little artistic with it. Sometimes I will go in and do some bullet journaling or I like to at some point at least 
physically write something down, whether I'm bullet journaling or just, you know, using a notepad and paper, I have to put pen to paper sometimes just to get things feeling right in my mind. Another thing that has become really imperative that I batch is creative projects and tasks. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now. I'm recording, I'm moving things around. I'm realizing now that I still have the trash can with the box on top of it that I was using to hold the camera earlier, see? Creative tasks. My creative tasks have changed over the years, um, especially business related, because I started out with a blog and then I was creating a course and then I opened up the podcast and then this YouTube channel a couple of years ago. So my creative tasks have been kind of all over the place and have transitioned from things like writing to audio recording and learning about microphones and you know all of that good stuff to you know what i'm doing right now which is video recording which is a whole different setup and string of tasks so there's a lot that goes into this and when i'm able to batch record videos it's limiting the number of times that i'm having to switch those tasks up right like pull out the light and set it up all over again set up the camera make sure i have the angle right all over again so it just really saves time and that's really what batching is all about it's saving you that that transition time of like transitioning from one mode of thinking to another mode of thinking or from one physical type of task to another physical type of task. And so in batching, I'm saving so much time. I'm saving exponential amounts of time here and I can definitely feel it on a week to week basis. The way that I do it and what's working for me right now is that I will batch two videos per week. I've seen other people like Sunny Linarduzzi, who's a YouTuber, and she batches six videos at a time. For me, that sounds like a lot. I would be exhausted if I'm able to batch record two videos per week, then that will stack up on my content calendar. So then the following week, I'll be ahead one video. The next week, I'll be ahead two videos. The third week, I'll be ahead three videos. By the time I get down to 12 weeks, I'll be ahead 12 videos. Sometimes I don't get quite that far, especially like right now, I'm just coming off of maternity leave, and so I'm kind of starting from scratch with that batching. But that's the idea. You can see how far ahead you can get and like how much breathing space you can really have just by doing even something as small as two batches per week. The third thing that I batch is technical or analytical projects. So we have the creative projects, right? Like where you're creating, you're getting to make something, whatever your specialty is. And then you have the more analytical and technical projects where you're maybe analyzing the results of what you've been creating. These are the tasks that might involve more math, right? You're using your left side of the brain versus the right side, the right side being the artistic and creative side, the left side being the analytical, mathematical reasoning side. I will look across the board at all of my analytics at once. YouTube, my website, anything that's mathematical or analytical or causing me to need to review without a creative eye, those are things that I'm gonna do during my analytical projects blocks. I don't necessarily always have these scheduled. I do definitely have set times like quarterly, I wanna review specific metrics and things like that, but there are also just general times during the day or during the week where I need to do more of that reasoning and mathematical type of thinking and I will try to batch all of those types of tasks together into one. Let's talk about my thriving social life. I do batch my social activities, meetings, and honestly even phone calls. I hate to say it but it's just like I'm an introvert. I've shared that before. I'm a major introvert. It takes a lot of energy for me to be giving a lot of social output all the time, right? So whenever I have a time where there's just a lot of visibility or a lot of conversations or face-to-face -face time, that could be in a big you know, promotion for one of my courses or something where I'm going live a lot, I'm talking to a lot of people, I'm getting more emails, there's more social interface, or it could be holidays where I'm around a lot more family and friends and people and just more crowds. Those types of times tend to drain me more. But even on a more micro basis, like week to week, whenever I have meetings, I try to schedule all those on the same day. Not that it's like, it takes me a whole lot of time to hop on a Zoom call any other day of the week. It's just that energy wise and, you know, getting in that zone wise, and maybe even like putting my makeup on, <laughs> you know, all the things that you do in order to prep and set up the camera and stuff. It's just so much easier to be able to 
do that all at once. Whether it's like, okay, I need to call the parents and the grandparents, who's everybody that I haven't talked to in a while that I really need to touch base with or I've been thinking about here lately. And I'll make those phone calls back to back. Happens every single time. If, I, if I'm calling people, I'm probably calling multiple people, unless there's a specific reason that I'm calling somebody. If you looked at my calendar on my phone right now, you probably can't see it, but Thursdays are stacked with meetings. Every time somebody comes with a meeting, I'm like, how does Thursday at like two o'clock work? Because that's where I'm already kind of working people in. And it just makes things a lot easier for me to pump myself up, get ready to be a little bit social and not have to spread that energy throughout the week. All right, a few rapid fire things that I just regularly batch just naturally are things like shopping. Anytime I need to shop for groceries, we do that once a week. So if we need to go buy Bye Bye Baby and Target and Fred Meyers and like get groceries, we'll try to do that all at once. One trip out, one trip in, batching the car trips especially if it's something we need to get in the car and go somewhere for any kind of errand. I'll wait until we have all the stuff that we need so that we can batch all of those trips together. I'm not a passive shopper. I'm not somebody who likes to just go mosey around the store just for fun or go look at things. I don't like shopping malls. Like I wanna get out there, get it done and get it back. So any type of trip or shopping, that's always batched. Physical activity, it's that activation energy of like getting started that is um, so cumbersome and to have to do that over and over again, not only waste your energy and your time, but it's just kind of a drag and you're less likely to do all the things that you need to do if you keep having to restart. We need to take down the Christmas tree and carry everything down to the garage. You know, we wanna go for a walk and walk Charlie. Maybe we need to do like some physical cleaning and tidying up around the house, like clear out the expired stuff from the fridge or do the dishes or something like that. I'll try to do as much of that physical activity at once as possible while I'm up and moving. And then I can just sit down and relax because chances are I'm not gonna get up a few hours later to start doing physical things again. So as much as I can get done at once, I'll feel like super productive and I'll be able to knock things off my list that need to get done. And it's really just like all about batching. So you can batch things that are mentally related, like we talked about earlier, creative thought processes and tasks, technical and analytical thought processes and tasks, and also physical processes and tasks, things that you need to expel that energy for. Lots of things that batching can really help out with. Meal planning, that's something else that I mentioned in my 15 systems video that I plan all of my meals. We have a Pinterest board with all of our recipes and we have sub boards in there for things like chicken meals, instant pot meals, you know, soups and stews, sandwiches and snacks. I like to keep this running list going so it's kind of like ordering off a menu whenever you wanna order your groceries every week. Budgeting and financing, every time I sit and balance the books, I'm a big fan of Mint and I have my own little spreadsheet that kind of pulls all the numbers in and calculates everything. I will get into that once a month, I'd say like at the first of the month, I'll close down everything from the previous month. I'll do that for my personal finances, for myself and Matt, we'll both get into our accounts and do what we need to do. I'll do that for my business account. And so all of that is done at the very beginning of every single month and it's batched. It saves me time from having to go in there every day and look at the accounts or every week and make sure that things are labeled and categorized correctly, which always needs a little bit of adjusting and tweaking. If I just do it at the beginning of every month, then I don't have to think about it or worry about it the entire rest of the month. And finally, yes, you absolutely can and I believe should, use batching inside of your home. Of course, it wouldn't be me and my channel if I didn't mention your home. I have a course called Clutter Cure, and I'll tell you that one of the first steps in creating a clutter-free space, the way that I teach people, is to work in modes, is what I call it. And essentially, working in modes is batching. <laughs> uh, working in modes is where you're using the same types of category or task and working all of those through before moving on to another category or task instead of doing room by room. You do eventually go room by room in order to optimize those spaces, but we never start there. We always start with working in modes. And the reason is because of the reason for all of these other batching tasks, it saves an exponential amount of energy. You're not having to switch from one mode to another mode mentally or even physically. So it's kind of like I use this example of you're cleaning your kitchen, putting everything away. You have some goals for making the space look amazing and you see your kid's shoes on the floor. So you stop, you pick up their shoes, you take it up to their room and you step on a wet towel as soon as you step into their bedroom. So you're like, that doesn't go there. You pick up 
up this wet towel, go hang it up in the bathroom, and then there's a whole other disaster there. And before you know it, three hours have passed and you haven't completed any single one area. You've been busy, you've been walking up and down a lot of stairs and carrying things from room to room, but a single room has not been completed, including the room that you had big goals for. So that's why we talk about working in modes or batching according to category or according to task. Check out my free masterclass where I share my holistic clutter-free formula. I share the link for that down in the description. So those are some of the key ways that I use batching on a day-to-day -day and week-to-week -week basis just in my general life. But if there are some things that I missed that you feel like you regularly tap into in order to save yourself a tons of time by means of batching, then by all means, leave those down in the comments so that we can learn and grow and become more optimized human beings together. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here and you haven't subscribed, then welcome. My name is Mia Danielle. I chat about holistic and clutter-free spaces, and I would love to have you join my lovely group of people here by subscribing and turning on the notifications. I will chat with you next week.